Maybe it's more like, well, bam, we're live. It's weird. If you, if you only have 1% chance of doing something and then it goes up to 10% chance, that's like 1,000% increase, right? Yeah. Gets the juices flowing a little bit. You get yeah. A little I don't interrupt. The fuck are you talking about? Hi, Lauren. How are you? Miss Lewis, how are you? Good to see you. Are those your sons you're standing with? Thank you for coming and joining us at the Sevon Podcast. Extra slop. Hi. We're out. Here. Let's go. There she is. I'm here, and I'm on time. <laughs> Wouldn't expect anything else. No, exactly. Wouldn't expect anything else. The show. Uh, hi, Sarah. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, hi, Sevan. Um, the the show's gotten like um, I realized how uh, like I've just. It, the show's either gotten so big or I don't give a shit or I'm so confident that now that when guests when guests used to not show up, it used to freak me out. But now I'm kind of I'm like, I, it's cool. Like I, there's other shit I can do. Like, you know what I mean? Like I can juggle or ride a unicycle or like floss my teeth or do some shit. I'm completely lost what you're talking about here. Oh, Sorry. good. OK, even better. Unicycle sounds very exciting, though. Can you ride a unicycle? No, but. I think I'm going to add it to my list. Do you have faith in me? <laughs> Always. Oh, it's good. Then I'll definitely add it to the list. Uh, fly a plane? Yeah. Sail a boat? Barefoot? Yes. Yeah, barefoot, of course. Have dreadlocks while I sail a boat? Mm -hmm. And be able to unicycle? You know, I think sort of you and I have um, similar <sighs> fantasies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I see myself living in a place, um, uh, just like shorts, nothing yeah. really, no other clothes. Um, Barefoot. I don't care if there's sand in the bed. Um, frisbee and reading and drinking and and swimming and eating fish out of the ocean and. Yeah, and when you've gone spearfishing, right? I have not, but I mean, well, I, I mean, I, like you will do that in the future, and that's the fish you will be eating, right? Because that's yeah, my you know, yeah, yeah. A, a friend of mine was on a sailboat. He said the in the Caribbean, the, he said that the chef jumped off the boat, uh, caught I think it was a tuna, brought it on board, and within fifteen minutes they were eating it. They didn't even cook it. He just they just had sushi right there. See, that's the dream. That is definitely a dream, and I, I would say that what you just explained is called Byron Bay in Australia. It's like that there too. Yeah, it's like everybody's barefoot. It's like the hippie style. Um, uh, Sevan would cry if he spear speared a fish. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. Hey, um, can't you, Sarah? Um, isn't there? I, don't, I need to be careful how I word this. Oh gosh. I don't think I can be careful with this one. Be nice. It's very nice. Okay. It's just okay. gonna be. It's gonna just be seen as. Um, <laughs> it isn't there someone. Well, okay, I figured it out. Isn't there someone out there in the world who part of their courtship to um, to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, um, uh, live a long, happily life, happily ever after with you? Part of that courtship could be to invite you onto their sailboat um, <laughs> to, to experiment with this lifestyle. Yeah, or I create that lifestyle with somebody that has the same interests. That could also be. Of, co of course. I'm just thinking like, um, uh, yeah, yeah. That's why, yeah, yeah, absolutely. A absolutely. I'm just, I'm just, 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 <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, fine. Be careful, Seth. I just don't want to come across as a – I didn't mean it in a chauvinistic way. I just didn't want it to come across as that, even though I don't think that there's any way it could not. But but it's not chauvinistic. It's just no, but you're, you're describing it like, you know, like Disney movies. They have the princess, and the prince always saves the princess. Okay, okay, okay. How about this? What I'm trying to do here is that – like strong, independent woman who doesn't need to rely on something else to uh, save. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. But if the but may, maybe that's your lesson in life to accept that because you're swimming upstream from it. And you did say in an interview that people want to be around people who are really um, living out their lives. And so you are going to be an attractive person to the rest of humanity because you're really living out your life. You're pushing into these. I forget exactly how you worded it. You worded it nicely. Um, uh, Okay, sorry. Hold on. Uh, David uh, McKella, Sevi, you got this confidence. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Uh, thank you, David. Um, that you're going to attract those kinds of people who have who have success in other places that might have brought them a sailboat already. Yeah, Ooh, I dunked that shit. Yeah, definitely manifesting it. And like you know, have you heard about the book and the movie Secrets? Yeah, yeah. Positivity, and then it yeah. comes to you. Yeah, I think I read the. The book's old, right? Yeah, it's very old. I think I read the book in college. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's old then. <laughs> no, I'm messing, I'm messing. I take it back. I feel guilty. Don't I, take it no. back. Don't look at. I even shaved off. I sh extra shaved to try to avoid the old, the old jokes tonight. Yeah. I did a little extra shaving. It looks cool. great. Thank you. There yeah, the secret there. Yes. Do you, um, do you believe in that method? Is the big question. Can I ask you a question before I answer that? I don't even know if I'll answer it, but I ask a question. Do you think that people who do have things in their life that they don't believe that they manifested, that it's just because they're not aware of their own thoughts? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Um, okay, that's fair. And then uh, now I'm going to ask you a really fucked up question. I'm with you there. Here, What about like the um, uh, two-year-old kid who gets cancer? That's like exactly why I don't believe it that much. <laughs> like, oh, you thoughts. tricked me i thought you fully believed it okay okay here we go there are thoughts there that i totally agree with but then they go too far in some areas and then there's some explanations that don't really make sense like you say a two-year-old that gets cancer is just insane and negative and that's way out of your control and he can't think his way out of cancer like they're saying in the book and that gives people hope that have cancer that, yeah, like that's what I like about the book is that it brings out the positivity of the things that are negative and you can look at it pos positively and that can help you. But then the facts that they're bringing are so, I don't, I don't know how to say it in a nice way, but like they're, they're, they are in facts. They're more just like stories. And they need more proof to be able to say that if you think positively when you have cancer, you can heal it. So what about the people that have not survived cancer, but were positive, like those kind of things. So that's why I don't completely. Believe oh, that too. I didn't even see you going that way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's a, uh, but, it's but, 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 or they weren't aware of what they were thinking. They were really thinking negative. Yeah, exactly. That could also be, but it's uh. It's it's mixed. I, I wouldn't say that I don't believe it and I wouldn't say that I believe it completely. But I'll definitely put positivity out in that world and, and try to achieve it. Um, and then there's also there's like just these outside factors like age, for instance. Um, I'm not going to win. My dreams of winning Wimbledon are. It's not. It you can't never know. Oh, shit. Oh, you never know. You're going to agree with me. I thought you were going to agree with me. <laughs> you never know what can happen to one. Does everyone under, if everyone on the planet under 55 except me died, then <laughs> maybe I could win Wimbledon. I'm 51. I'd be just beating up on old people. Yeah. Uh, hey, Sarah. Lucky camera straps from Australia. Australia. I have six sailboats in Byron Bay. Um, <laughs> I would, you can uh, live on one anytime you want. Wow. That was fast. I already manifested it. Uh, I love listening to you on the podcast. I think Sevon secreted this. Oh, 1499. Wow. Yeah. I secreted Sarah coming on here. I secreted the 1499. Yeah. Um, uh, Jay Hartle. Uh, she's fucking you up today, Sevy. I know. She, it, <laughs> she's like a basketball player. She keeps like. No, no, no. I. Uh, she's got I'm, all these feints. I can't catch her. Yeah. Just preparing here of uh of the the questions that'll get later on. Stay sharp. Stay yeah, sharp. Exactly. Mentally prepared, you know. 
let's uh, let's start with something in the in the uh, physical realm. When I when I saw the shuttle runs, I thought I always think that they're just stupid. I thought that they were just a lazy use of like just laziness, and it was to get people to run, but you didn't have a lot of space. And then recently, I started playing tennis with my boys, and we play a game called short court, and it's, we play on only half the court. And there's a lot of quick, explosive movements. And yeah. granted, I am 51, but when I do that, I cannot believe how fast my hamstrings light up. Yeah. I cannot believe it. Every time I shift directions, like if I shift directions like more than five or six times before one of us scores a point, I'm like, oh shit. Like I have to con be so conscious to like get my body because my body starts wanting to refuse to, to do it. Do it, yeah. Uh, to what do you feel that? What are your, what are Sarah Sigmund's daughters, Sigmund's daughters, daughters' thoughts on shuttle runs? The shuttle. I have mixed thoughts there. I mean, uh, the open test that was what one mile in total or something in shuttles. I don't quite support that, but I support what you're experiencing of like the shuttles as a, as a power test and a sprint test. So definitely support that. But doing 50 shuttles is just like, what is that testing? And it's becomes more of your back because you're bending down to touch the floor versus it. It's actually testing your running. I didn't. Uh, I didn't like that part. No. The touch the touch the floor part. I think I mentioned that on a couple of shows. Doesn't make a lot of sense if you're testing running and change the direction. Why would you have to touch? I understand that there's like some standard if you're doing a very fast sprint and everybody has to go over this line and do a burpee or something like that, like something that is the right for everybody. But fifty reps. And that is just makes not a lot of sense. And I remember I did the last year's qualifier that was uh, 10 to 1 shuttle sprints. And I remember the clean and jerk were the only things that matter. So you were just literally walking the shuttles so you could have energy and clean and jerk. So like, what is that testing with clean and jerks? Why isn't there just rowing if you're testing conditioning or something? So it's, I have mixed opinions about it, but it depends on what you're trying to fatigue what movement is with it that you're trying to use the shuttle sprints to fatigue the other moment. Are you, do you train shuttle runs? I definitely do. Cause I am horrendous in them. At what part at the changing the directions? Just everything like these legs, they weren't born to run. I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> a great book. Yeah. Yeah. Did you read hey, that book? Speaking read of barefoot? Oh. To, what do you say? You haven't read it. You said I haven't read it yet. It's on my list though. Yeah, you'll love it. I, I did the um, audio book. Yeah, I'll definitely do the audio book too. Yeah, it's cool. Fant it's a fantastic story. A uh, BJ Penn, nineteen eighty nine, Sevon Starstruck. You're it's Starstruck, or I'm Starstruck. I'm always Starstruck. Yeah. Oh, Sarah's Starstruck. You're telling me Sevon, she's Starstruck. I understand. Yeah, yeah. I'm are always... you? Are you in the city of San Francisco? I am. Or I, it's called Sante Marino. I'm thirty minutes from San Francisco. San Mateo? Oh, that, yeah, San Mateo. No, uh, yeah, maybe it is that. It's like 30 minutes from Santa Cruz. You're south of San Francisco, and you're north of Santa Cruz. Uh, yeah. San, I don't know Santa Marino. Hold on. No, it's like a new, maybe, <laughs> wait. New town. Uh, is it Marin? Marin? Santa Marino. Uh, Monte Sereno. Is that the name of the hotel? No, that's the place. How do I not know that place? Yeah, I, I know it's more than you know. Mountain I'm, View? I'm literally... Go, go down to San Jose, Caleb. I think she's... um. I'm 10 minutes from uh, Los Gatos. So I've been training at Jason Kalipa's gym while I'm here, which is an amazing gym, by the way. It's been... Uh... Let me find it. I think the... Is, are you staying with a friend? No, I'm staying in an Airbnb. And and how come you're there? Uh, so I'm uh, seeing this guy that's helping me with a uh, movement, like a movement specialist. So I'm seeing him for about 10 days before the season starts to try, try to get the body sorted. Um, so there wasn't a lot of availability because of 4th of July. So I had to be pretty far away. So I'm about 30 minutes from, from uh, Santa Cruz. He, he's in Santa Cruz? Yeah. 
How long have you been here? Fourth of July. Wow. Yes. Um, th so you're driving over the 17. Yeah. Holy cow. It's amazing. I haven't seen these many trees like in so yeah. long. Yeah. Where there I you? am. Oh, how'd you find that? You went to NC Fitz. Um... Yeah, I just I just Google mapped <laughs> across the gym that that's close by, and I that came up, and I was like, oh, I might as well go there. I didn't know I was that close to the gym, <laughs> and then uh, I went to the gym, and, and Jason actually messaged me afterwards <laughs> to welcome me to his gym. But it's so nice. Yeah, that's crazy. I I uh, I don't know if it's my place to do that. But his house is vacant. I actually thought about it. Sorry, I mean, Jay Hartle says invite her over to Greg's. Yeah, he has a huge house here that's just empty in Santa Cruz. I probably shouldn't say that. No, it's full of people. Full of people, yeah. Full of people. Um, uh, what do you, what do you mean you're here just before the season starts? What season are you talking about? Um, CrossFit season. Okay, tell me. I didn't know CrossFit had a season. <laughs> Well, you try to have a season here. You uh, you have the CrossFit Games, and you pretty much go from there, right? So the Open, the quarters, and everything. But, um, well, you can pretty much choose your season now compared to all the good competitions that are on the way also. So for you, the season starts in 10 days? Uh, no, my season, yeah, I would say my season would start around August, and that's – or it's off season starts now. Like I've been taking time off since semis. So before the on season starts or like the, the first week of real training, um, I would say like, it's probably going to be around mid, like beginning of August, mid July. And, and then, and then what are you training for? That is the big question. I have so many, Many are like many competitions in mind, so I'm trying to choose, pick and choose here. I'm waiting for uh, dates for uh, the qualify for Rogue Invitationals. I really want to compete there, but uh, I think they're in mid August. So if I just started training again in August, then there are only five that come through. I'm I'm not that optimistic about it. The shape I'm in now is uh, not uh, not that great. I'll tell you that. Um, and if not, like there are some other competitions on the way, like some in Europe and and I might actually go to Australia this year and train with Caitlin in off season. So go there in October. So I might do down under, but probably as a team, not individual. So there's there's a lot lot of options, but I think it all like the what matters mostly for me now is just getting my body ready for some real training and not have any niggles or anything when I start training. So taking a good off season, uh, wrist ribs, knee. Uh, <laughs> well now it's, uh, after semis it's elbow. I tore, uh, a tendon in my elbow in event six. So I'm on week five now, uh, in recovery. So it, it was a grade two tear, so I didn't have to have surgery. Very happy with that. Uh, Can you show me where it's at, Sarah? My elbow. Yeah, your elbow. Sure. I don't know if you can see it on here, but there's a gap here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally see that. Yeah, I totally so see that. That's where it tore. But we're getting there. So I'm going to be smart with this and let that heal completely before I can decide what I'm going to or where I'm going to compete at. But I definitely want to do one team and one individual competition. Um, there is a um, a video of you. It's a pretty uh, poignant video. You posted it on your Instagram account right here. Yeah. Uh, it says, I have no words. Some things don't have an explanation. Yeah. And that was workout six. But uh, in training, you finished it in sub 12 minutes, which would have put you in fourth place. Yeah. Instead, you, you got uh, capped and you finished in 56th place. Yeah. It was very interesting because you did not seem to have any trouble climbing up the rope, but no, coming so down no. the rope. I didn't have any strength on my left coming down. Uh, so I just slipped always when I had to grab with my right on the way down. And, and there's footage of you putting your knee on your arm, like trying to rub your arm out. 
Yeah, I was just trying to do something to <laughs> to to try to get this rope. Like I didn't know what I could do on that floor. I was hoping that adrenaline would take me through it, or it was just a very very heartbreaking experience to be honest. And it's probably every athlete's fear that this can happen, and <laughs> and that happened, and I'm still alive, so I'm happy with that. But it was. Like I felt something pop on the way down in the second attempt. Uh, so I wasn't sure what happened completely. Like it wasn't that painful, <laughs> but there's also so much adrenaline going on. So yeah, I didn't have an explanation of what happened. And I was before going into that event, these were my two events. I, I even said to to Snorri and my friends, so just like Sundays are always my days. And especially with these two workouts, I can't wait to do them. And I was in 12th place and I was like, I'm in a good, because I was mostly the, I, I was stressed about the snatches because uh, impact into squatting has been one of the most challenging parts after ACL tear. So I was very nervous of like doing a one rep max snatch after a run, which went very good. So happy with that but I thought that would be or like I thought I already had the ticket almost there and you can like that just taught me you can never be sure of what will happen ever um this in the write-up you write there's no explanation yeah but there is an explanation and now there's an explanation I did an MRI when I came home just to get it cleared like it could have just been a small, like a minor, like a, a muscle tear or something like very minimal, but it's the, the muscle junction or whatever it's called is it's completely gone off the tendon. So that's why I didn't have any strength. Holy shit. Yeah. So, so it's, it's good to have an explanation now, but I also, I don't want to be the one that has excuses of why things go wrong. Like this just wasn't supposed to happen this year that I could make it to the games and my body made sure of that. So I need to make sure that my body's ready next year for something like that to never, ever happen again. Um, uh, Jeremy says, uh, so easy to cheer for this lady, all heart. <laughs> um, how, how did you break your ribs? Oof. The first rib I broke from overtraining uh what year was that 2017 okay i think i knew about that okay yeah and the second rib i broke was because of a belt that i used at the games uh, so i broke my second rib in the warm-up before the 1rm uh workout cross the total and what, what year was that 2018 so i broke the rib in the warm-up uh and i thought like Okay, I, I felt the crack and I knew that it was broken. I was like, if I don't release the belt, I'll be able to finish this event. And then we had the marathon rowing in the evening and then we had the day off on Thursday. And I just thought, okay, if I can push through this today, then I can make a decision of what's about to happen. I can't make anything worse by having a broken rib. Like it's it's not, it's just painful. And if you're a crosser, you can handle pain. So, uh, so I went went through that. Um, and then I couldn't finish the competition on Saturday. I did everything until the last event then. So that was also, that was the most heartbreaking moment before <laughs> event six on semifinals this year. Before, before semifinals this year was what? That moment of just having to disqualify from the CrossFit Games because oh, of it. oh be, yeah. okay yeah besides that right right yeah and then and then when you went into event seven did you know uh, this year at semifinals did you know something was wrong with your elbow or you still didn't know no I I knew but I wanted you suspected to okay yeah. yeah yeah I knew I like that gap was right away or like I saw that gap and the difference in in the forearms but I like it's one more event. And you have off season after that event, you might as well finish. Hey, does that thing attach to this bone here? Yeah, it attaches to the it's that, here. that little knob. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's actually like all the way in here. It's oh. it's a muscle is called terrace something. Can't remember quite what it's called. <laughs> okay. 
I can feel that thing too. It's like a wire. Yeah. 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 It's the muscle close to the wall. Yeah. yeah Why yeah. do you say your elbow? Why don't you say your bicep? Okay. It's a, it's more a lower here. Okay. Like what I feel is the forearm. Let's say that. Okay. So yeah. I asked because I hurt my bicep, uh, lowering a dumbbell, a snatch. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and everyone keeps saying it's your elbow. I'm like, no, it's my bicep. It's my I, bicep, yeah. but it's right here. But everyone keeps saying it's my elbow, and 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 I'm like, hmm, I wonder why she says it's her elbow. But is your was your pain here? Uh, so pronator terrace is what what I tore. God, it's you a can, fucking mess in there. Oh yeah, okay. So they all kind of attach there. Yeah. Hey, uh, Caleb, is that arrow pointing to the inside of the arm? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fuck, I know exactly where that is. All those suckers attached to that thing. Yep. Oh, so but this one, the one that you hurt comes over the top. Yeah. And you got three other ones underneath it. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't work with me on the rope climbs, you know? Yeah. It, 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 it makes sense. It makes sense that um uh it would happen on the way down, right? Because that's yeah. where the That was I just didn't like I just slipped down. And then I was trying to grab with my right, but like nothing, nothing worked. Um, any other, um, what, what were the, what were there, was this year an easy year for you besides that? Was it a fun year? Was it a, no. I would definitely say like, like the, the competition was just very interesting. Let's say that the judges were very, very like uh, strict and, like taking it to a different level of sometimes being a little bit unfair to some athletes. Um, and I don't know if it was because we were the last weekend and like, like some standards just changed from weekend one, which is very unfair. Like you could see people in pistols balancing by putting one leg behind themselves. And then all of a sudden that's a no rep. So <laughs> if your other leg goes a little bit behind or to the side, it's a no rep, but you're not like, you're not using you're not it putting your foot down no right so well the first weekend like that's ma that makes a huge difference if you get 10 no reps in a pistol you can do way less burpees so i would say like those things were very very uh annoying but there's just some things you can't control and i mean they're just trying to put the standard higher of of it being equal for all all athletes but some judges just become extra strict and just are not fair in some areas. And um, uh, this uh, whole, this guy put on his decoder ring. Uh, Sarah says the judges were strict. I translated it to the judges sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say like the judges are there as volunteers and they're trying, like they're doing their job to, for us to be able to compete. So like, that's so respectful and everything, but it's just very heartbreaking when you put your whole year into one event and then it's a judge's call of some things that put you down 10 places or something like I remember in the muscle up workout, like I had to stop in every movement for about one to two seconds to show control while you see other athletes barely, <laughs> barely extending. So it's like you were the unlucky one with that judge. So it's like, the judges need to be on the same page of how strict they are. So it's equal for all athletes. Consistent. Yeah. It needs to be consistent. Are you seeing this thing that they're talking about, um, uh, in regards to the grips? I have you, have you watched <laughs> any of that today that's gone down on social media. I haven't watched anything. I just saw this yesterday and today I actually put grips on and put sweatpants here. So they became shorter mm -hmm. and the grips, go to here but as soon as i jump to the pull -up bar they go above <laughs> or why, like what do you think about why don't they just get rid of grips altogether so they don't have to worry about it yeah i i don't would, understand this at would you all. be okay with that if they just got rid of grips i mean you would just have to deal with it right the guy from the grip company uh, has even spoke out about it yeah but, from victory grips from victor yeah but it's this is <laughs> Why, what benefits are you getting for the grips being a little bit longer than your fingers? I don't understand. I, understand I don't understand. I don't, I don't think anyone understands it. No, like I understand when people wrap, uh, like, but I don't understand. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. I don't understand what's going on there at all. Yeah. Like these new rules and these, yeah, I just, it's, it's becoming out of control in my opinion. Can you, can you pull that back up? I think Sarah agrees with the second comment there. Um, it's the guy said, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, Julian Marquez, it's not how long it is, but how you use it. That's what you were. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> it's, That's a, always... it's a very good comment there. <laughs> uh, it's um, let, let me read this here just really quick. Um, the judges thing is always interesting. I mean, it, um, it, right. Because there's 40 people hearing one guy tell them what the, how they should judge. And it, it's gotta be hard getting consistency. Judges use the standard. They're told to uphold. Okay, we'll take your word on that. It's the head judge and boss to determine what the standard is and not change the standards week to week. Yeah. I think that's true too, um, Andrew, but I think what Sarah's referring to is there were some people who were put in the pistol at the top. They would let their foot go behind them, and then other and they would get a no rep, and other judges weren't calling that, so there was inconsistency there. But at the end, she's even saying it's irrelevant. Why would that have even been – a benefit the topic. But it's and it's also, the same with the wrist guards like if there's yeah. a problem with the wrist just f wrist straps just get rid of them yeah but it, like what i mean in the pistols is that in the first week that wasn't a standard you uh -huh. could actually put your leg behind yourself yeah well at least we watched it on or i watched it and i saw many athletes do that right and then all of a sudden three weeks later it's a, it's a rule that you can't do it so it's it's weird that you're watching people do something and getting away with it, but then all of a sudden they make up these new rules on the way. Uh, Sarah Cox, there were some people she even saw rest their foot on the ground on some pistols. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is like, like I had four judges over me in the pistols, and I understand it. Like my depth is like pistols are one of the hardest things for me now, and I understand that I need to reach a specific standard and everything. But I was getting no rep so much for four actually reps and four judges over me and it was just like it, does this really need to be like this like why why isn't the head judge walking over to other athletes too why why are you had four, four judges? judges at one point staring at yeah. you as you did pistols yeah. yeah oh no so it's like it's just uh yeah i mean they just want me to hit the standard and everything but <laughs> me from an athlete side is like I also want the other athletes to do it. And then you see videos of girls posting later that evening that are not hitting the standard in the same uh, heat as you. And you're like, it's great that the head judge was over me, right? Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting is there, th I mean, there's always going to be a ton of eyes on you, right? So someone was saying that even in event six, no one was even watching the winner. All eyes were on you struggling with the rope climb. And, yeah. and it's, and you, I know you don't want to, the audience is one thing. The judges are another thing, but the yeah. judges probably do feel extra pressure around you. Right. Yeah. yeah probably. Because yeah. there's a thousand people watching you and, and, and you know, yeah. and they're just, every one of them is judging your reps. Yeah. But I mean, I also want to be an athlete that hits the standards, but right. when, when you're hitting the standard standards and you're not getting the reward of it, like that's, that's so heartbreaking because you're losing so much energy and time. I understand a few reps, but when, when the reason you don't do well in a workout is because of ton of no reps that weren't actually no reps is it, it can be hurtful. Let's say oh, that. it's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. It, it, it's horrible. Uh, Sarah needs a training card. Wad, wad zombie, make it happen. A training <laughs> card. Like the What's Colton Merton, card? like a Colton Merton's trading card. Oh, or, or a Ben Smith trading card. That is so cool. They are cool. And they're yeah. wrapped in, and the, they're in this like really hard plastic. They're really cool. And they're so it's like a crossed Pokemon. I know a guy. You know a guy. Yeah, I have him contact Snorri. <laughs> yes. I have yeah. a question for you. If I would have only gone through Snorri, if I wouldn't somehow been able to infiltrate your cell phone, would I still be waiting for an interview? No, no, no. Snorri loves you, so he would make oh, okay. it happen. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Okay. Thank you. I love Snor and now I love Snorri too. I'm easy like that. Uh, Andrew, with any sport, there's human judgment. There, there will be inconsistencies. It sucks and should be called out when it happens. Yeah. Um, uh, Andrew Hiller. Uh oh, it's because uh -oh. she was squatting with Sunny Webster. Andrew, not nice. Holy cow! Holy cow! Does Sunny Webster not squat below parallel? No, I wasn't squatting below parallel because I just uh, had a knee swelling that day. So 
and I wasn't gonna prove anything on a YouTube video. So if you can hear that, Andrew Hiller, it wasn't about the depth in the back squat. It was about changing the position of my hands. If you were listening. Oh, yeah. If you were listening, Andrew. No, in the pistols. Yeah. I think he means in the pistols. No, he said in the Sonny Webster video. Oh, That's from that video. Oh, oh. Hey, is Sonny Webster cool as shit? He is so cool. So like, I had him scheduled to come on a podcast, and somehow it got. I need to uh, circle need back to around. Make that happen. Yeah, he is amazing. I was just meeting him for the first time in in Dubai, and he was very nice and just very helpful. Like the comments that he has, he sim has simplified so many things, and he understands how CrossFit is like and how he can cue you with your Olympic weightlifting when you're a CrossFitter. So it's it's very. Like he is, uh, he has some very nice videos also of like just evaluating people's techniques. Um, do you know who Tanner Shrunk is? Yes. Do I? Do you like him? I love him. Yeah, he is amazing. Yeah, I he really like him. Very honest. <laughs> yeah, he was on the show. He 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 wept on here. Maybe I wept too. Yeah, he was on the show. It was good. Really? Was he on the show? Yeah, I'd love to have him on again. I really enjoyed hanging with him. Yeah. Yeah, I trained in the same gym as him in Dubai. Uh, Andrew Hiller says, well played, Sarah. I'm listening. Carry on. And he's saluting. Yeah. Oh, he trained at the same gym as you. Yeah. Um, when that happens, does he come over does he come over and say hi to you? Yeah, of course. We we chat a lot. We trained one time together. Um, but, but I mean the first time, like you like I mean he lives there, right? And yeah, you're he lives and, and you're more there like periodically. Yeah. But and so when he sees you come in, does he say, walk over me like, oh, hi, Sarah. Um, yeah. I competed with you in Dubai. Uh, nice to see you here. Yeah, yeah. he's just very Will you, mar will nice. you marry me? <laughs> no, he hasn't asked that yet, but oh. yeah, I'm, I'm still waiting on that. There's time. There he is. Yeah, I really like him. He's cool. You know, he has a lovely girlfriend also that trains with him. So, yeah, and he's just he's just a very nice person. He <laughs> He's very honest on Instagram, and then you meet him, and he has the sweetest heart. And he's been through so many knee issues, so it's good to meet somebody that <laughs> that you can relate to a little bit. Oh, that's right. He did like – instead of like four years of his life, he spent like two years in a wheelchair or some shit. That, that's right. I remember he's that. Yeah. Insane, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good – he's a um, he's a good dude. Yeah. Um, When I was asking you about this year, I actually didn't mean about the semifinals. I meant how was your whole entire year? Has it been a – um? Would you say, oh, my God, I, what a blessed year. What a great year, for, yeah. a first year comeback from, from my um, knee issues. Or was it just like, holy shit, I just couldn't get things going. It seemed like you got things going. I had I had a, an amazing momentum going on uh, through quarterfinals and everything. And then just three weeks. Even going prior, back to Wadapalooza team. Yeah, great. like great. it started there. Like great. the individual and team at Wadapalooza and then just training again and like everything was just going smoothly and I was like just getting back to where I was again. Uh, and then just something personal happened three weeks before semis. So like I, I couldn't quite make it up in that time. So yeah, so everything was going well until then. And I just did the best that I could compared to circumstances. And um, when you say that um, something personal happened, that means that I'm not supposed to ask about it. Did I say you that out loud? Wait. If I write a book, you can read about it. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> uh, okay. Just a small hint. Uh, something emotional or something physical? Uh, both. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you just wait. You just wait. Oh. My book will be as thick as the Bible, I tell you that. The great stories that I will have. Um. It, it doesn't matter how long it is, Sarah. It's how you use it, they say. It doesn't have to yeah. be a long book. Um, uh, yeah, it's bullshit, by the way. Um, um, uh, will you write your own book? I mean, I don't feel that I can do it now. I would say that I'll write a book probably in the end of my career when my shoes are on the side and on the wall or something. Uh, but... I don't think I write a book yet. No. Uh, nice try, Sevon. We appreciate the effort, Sevon. Hold on, hold on. I'm not done. Give me a second here. Give me a second. So we'll circle back. Give her. We'll give her some, <laughs> uh, 
uh, slip a Molly into her drink. Um, now, um, uh, when, when you, um, when you say you'll uh, write a book, when I say, well, will you write it? Will you write it personally or will you have someone? You, no, you will, I'll write it personally. You'll write it. And what if you forget? What if you forget what happened? I won't forget. I'll tell you that. I won't forget anything. Like, I think that soon I'll start to write all the things that have happened until now. And, like, start to decide what the name of the chapters are and everything. But this is not going to be a priority now. The first priority is learning how to fly an airplane and become an athlete again. So what about, um, uh, I wrote this screenplay that I also, well, I wrote this graphic novel, but it doesn't have pictures yet. And, and I wanted it to be a screenplay and it's called five years to fornication. And it's the five years from, it's from the day I met my wife to the five years it took me to. To do the magic. When you write your book, would you throw things in there to make it more enticing for a screenplay? Mm, I think what I'll write, like a little more tell all, like you know what I mean, like a little, like exaggerate a lot of things. Are you talking about that? No, or... just like um, uh, at the 2014 CrossFit Games. There was an opening between the men's and women's locker rooms that no one knew about. <laughs> and as I looked over at the crack, I saw Jason Kalipa staring at me naked. That <laughs> night, I snuck over to his hotel room. You know, not I'm just saying, like making it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Er like, er erotic or just adding some stuff that other like these other people like not just fucking one knee injury after another, but like a yeah, um, add adding some love and and love, love. love. Thank you. It, adding yeah. some love to it, maybe some. Yeah. Um, yeah, if I, don't have, like, if I have a story like that, like, I mean, I'll definitely write that up. <laughs> okay. But that doesn't happen a lot in CrossFit, to be honest. No? No. No one has time. No one has time for that shit. It's too, um, th 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 that reminds me of a question I forgot to ask you. Um, we'll come back to your uh, personal issues in a second. When you say that your fitness isn't, um, it, you're not at semifinals level right now. It's only yeah. been a month since semifinals. What would you say is the fastest reason it declines? Uh, nutrition or uh, exercise? I would say it's mental. Oh, okay. I didn't even, yeah, I didn't I even make that an option. No, I would say it, that it's the balance between all three. I, like my nutrition is not bad at all now, but the drive of training and everything is zero because you're not going somewhere. And you have been going somewhere for so long. So, like, you've been thinking about semis and will I make it to the games, will I not? Like, it's so mentally hard and, like, mentally draining for such a long time. And then you don't reach your goal and you feel that all the stuff that you've been through and everything you pushed through is, like, uh, was it worth it? Like, you go on – I call it, like, post-competition depression. It's not depression, but it's just, like, you're just not aiming for something anymore. and and you can actually calm down a little bit. So the drive for training, the drive for eating super healthy, the drive for training two times a day and everything's about having a good session, like that needs to calm down a little bit after that so you can actually go back up. I'm trying to see if I can relate to that. I mean, you uh, must have had like a major event that you've been looking forward to for such a long time. Then the event is over. And you're like empty. That's how I, I think about it. It's like you're so empty. You're going to bed and you're not thinking about your dream or where you're going or it's two weeks until that. And I need to be doing this, this, this. Like all of a sudden it's like this, this calmness and emptiness until you find the next goal. The only thing I can think of is, is this is going to be horrible. Don't tell anyone this. But I push my kids uh, so hard without them knowing they're being pushed. I keep them on this schedule, this yeah. schedule, the schedule. And then if one of them gets injured, I always have this, like, like I take every, my foot off the gas completely. And I just want to, I, I used to have this whole reevaluation, like, Oh shit. All that matters is they're in the game. It does yeah. not matter how well they do yeah. like, uh, completely yeah. let off. Like, Hey, what do you want to do today? Like completely let them fall. But it takes always like something like that 
to realize. I, I don't yeah, even you, know where we're going, but we're on like a regimented, like, yeah, mm, yeah. You know what you I mean? You just, you get lost in the outcome versus the journey. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I feel guilty if we miss a day of training for skateboarding yeah, yeah. or jujitsu or tennis yeah. or you, studies. You sometimes, like, like I was even thinking this yesterday. Like you sometimes forget the important, simple things that give you fulfillment because you're always striving for success in everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that is very much connected to social media and what we see every day is that we always feel like we need to achieve something because this person is achieving this and this person is achieving this. And what am I doing? I'm just uh, relaxing here. I, I could be doing so much more. So you feel like you're worthy is almost based on what you're achieving. Yeah, because yeah. of because of what what you're seeing and you're like um, I don't know if composed to is the right word or just what you're what you're seeing every day and the information yeah. you're getting. So. Yeah, when one of my kids got, I love to see the growth in my kids. It's like uh, um, I grew marijuana back as a young man, and I loved waking up in the morning and opening the closet. And every – it's a really fast-growing plant. Every day it looks different. I'm growing cucumbers now. I can't believe they – like you. I could go to bed and see cucumbers only this big, and I wake up in the morning. It's like this. It's oh crazy. And, yeah, you just want to – you're just you, – you just want to see change. You're, you become yeah. addicted to the to the growth, to the, to the next goal. Like I can't wait for my kid's next skateboarding yeah. trip. Yeah, and I can't wait for the next success feeling I'm going to feel, the yeah. the accomplishing something. Like, you get addicted to that versus I sometimes think about, like, okay, when I'm 80 years old and I only lived in Iceland and trained from 8 to 4 in the darkness when I have all these other opportunities while I'm an athlete, why would I only focus on that versus I can do what I love around the world and inspire Versus just thinking about, I want to win, I want to win, I want to win. Like, I think that the happiness that comes around the journey actually leads you to a better outcome. You know what I mean? I hope so. I yeah. do know what you mean. I, it's so hard to see that when shit's going sideways, but yeah. Yeah, it's so hard to see. And it's so hard to, like, some athletes are different than others. And some need to simplify things completely. Well, some simplify things, but because it's so simple, they overthink too much and they get like, I'm one of them. If I'm only focusing on training, I get so obsessed. So if I don't sleep nine hours and I start stressing about that and something goes wrong and like, I got this realization when I got injured, I was like, wow, I've completely lost who I am here because I have no idea. I'm off now for six to eight months. What, what do I do now? <laughs> Like it's it's almost an eye opener of like you are this athlete and that's your full identity almost, and then something happens to you and you can't be that identity for six to eight months, which is a long time for an athlete, or at least it, I felt it was very long. Like lifetime, lifetime. Yeah, lifetime for an athlete, and you just like you have to realize that this journey isn't gonna last for so long, and why aren't you enjoying all the things that you could enjoy while you're on it? Um, the last time we were here, oh, you and I, on this computer, we talked about um, – you helped me with values, understanding the importance of values. Yeah. Um, this – this I've made new values after that conversation. Uh, I've just become aware of my values more. more. Like, like I, I had them, but I ne it's important to articulate them for the sense of like um, – uh, kind of like a superficial placeholder identity, right? Yeah. So it's like the kind of thing like no matter how injured you get, at least you still have values. Yeah. Right? Like and no one can take those from you. No, and that's the person that you are. Like you you think around your values. Like your values are there for a reason because that's the person you want to be. So if you are aware of what your values are, you know what direction you're going to. Uh, um, this, this, a uh, personal event that happened, it, it was three weeks long. Yes. Well, it's longer than that, but it was discovered three weeks before. D and, and, and did you come out stronger from it? No, but I will. Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more here. Do you have a boyfriend right now? No. 
Um, I'm a lesbian, remember? Uh, I have information to the contrary. Um, uh, Barry um, uh, McCockin are 69 shades of CrossFit. <laughs> Just pretend like you don't notice. Just pretend like you don't notice. Just act cool. Act cool, sir. Act cool. Well, thank you, Barry, for the money. That's cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Act cool. Just act cool. Don't, don't read it out loud. That's what they want. That's what they want. He deserves it. He paid for it. <clears throat> okay, fine. She gets the joke. Uh, Justin's a Zumbo. He is a salty hive CrossFit in um, Utah. And I, <laughs> I think he, I shouldn't say this, but I think he should change the name of the gym to Salty Beaver. <laughs> it, it just, it seems just like, cause, cause it's a sweaty gym and sweat is salty. Yeah, true. Okay. Uh, Justin's a Zumbo. My favorite thing about Sarah as a guest with Sevon is how well she listens. She gets as, as excited about what he says as he does for what she says. It's just a back and forth. Awesome. Well, thank you. It's true. It's not, but she's like that with, um, I'm not special. She is an absolutely amazing uh, guest. If you watch her on any podcast, why don't you do more podcasts? Oof. That is a big question, you know. I are you really a lesbian? You're not. I've, I've no, I know I'm some not. other stories. You don't. Re <laughs> you don't remember what you asked me last time. So I asked you if you were lesbian. Time, yeah, the first time you asked me, Sarah, are you lonely? And I said no. Why? And you said because you travel a lot and da, 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 da. and then you asked me, do you have a boyfriend? And I said no. And then you said. Are you a lesbian? <laughs> oh, good. That's fair. Okay, good. Yeah. Right. So it was like the conversation around it. You just wanted to try to get it out. And, the uh, thing that see, that's how cool I am. I can't even remember what it. I don't remember anything, so I don't hold anyone in a box. Things could have changed. Yeah. Well, I, I was. Everything. Uh, you do. Um, my wife remembers everything too. Girls are good. Like I think girls have better memory. Yeah, we have skills. Our skills that like, guys don't have by memory, like connecting to memory. I think. I heard that um, memories are connected to emotions and because women is, – is that – do you see where I was going to go with that? Because women yeah. are more emotional. They're able to re we, remember better. They can connect, connect emotions to memories. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we connect the emotions to memories, and that makes you actually – so if you connect emotion to something that's happening and you have that emotion for about 90 seconds, it stays. Or that's what I read one time. I don't know how true it is. So, Can you fake it? Connecting to an emotion – like, can something happen that I don't want to remember? Like, right now, it could be like, oh, my God, Sarah, you're not a lesbian. Holy shit. And, like, fake some excitement, <laughs> like, some emotion, and then, like, be like, okay, I think that's stuck. I, I think you would have to have a, like, when you would say it, you would actually have to think about, like, a success from your kid while you're actually saying it out loud. So the emotion comes as a happiness. And then you'll always connect to success with your kid. So Sarah is, a lesbi is not a lesbian. Yeah. Now I'm really confused. I don't even know what I believe. <laughs> hey, what about that thing when people pull, have a rubber band around their hand and then they snap it? Yeah, that's just uh, – that's when you have bad thoughts and you need to uh, make pain to let your body know that that's a bad thought and you should not re remember it and that you should oh. get rid of it. So if you have oh. that bad thought again, you think about the pain. But there's also a cue of like you have an arm – like um, – you have a bracelet here and then you change it each time you have a bad thought. So you're aware of that. You're having a bad thought. So it's mostly the, like the awareness of stuff. Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Eat World. Uh, do you want one? I think that was a, a, a boyfriend. Uh, do you want one? I think he's offering. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, like I said, I don't have time, you know, he's a creep anyway. God, I'm a creep. Oh, fair enough. There's a, there's, it's fine. A little creepy. Jeremy, we know that you mean well. We know that you mean well. Look at you. How good you are. Uh, um, Sarah gets it instantly. It took seven weeks. Yeah, the Barry McCockner thing. I didn't. I didn't. It, 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 I didn't get it forever. <laughs> now everyone's trying to have a funny name in here. Okay, we're gonna um, give up on the three week event. We're gonna give uh, the boyfriend thing that on hold. Let's move on to um, aspirations for uh, next year. Yeah. Is it um, 
is is it the games still? Yeah, of course. I think it's always going to be the games, but I feel that I'm very excited for Rogue. Like okay. I feel that Rogue is one of the most fun competitions. Um, but I think that on the way to the games, like you're trying, like you sacrifice a lot to be able to peak at the right time and everything like that. And then maybe it doesn't go well. Like, let's say that, that some, like I get sick next time in semifinals and I don't make it to the games again. Like, I think that I've learned my lesson now of like, I don't think you need to sacrifice all the competitions on the way for that one competition. Mm. So that's you why never I, did that though. You never did that, right? No, you always I kind of thought of competitions yeah. as training. Yeah, I function best when I compete, but my body needs to be able to to hold up because it's when you're competing, the intensity is just way higher. So you're pushing your body through a lot of a lot more stuff, and um, and I think that yeah, a few competitions on the way, but the games are a course. If I wouldn't try to compete at the games again, I, I think that that's one of the signs of giving up, and that's not in the in the system here. Um, by the way, that's a cl that's a classic uh, Sarah Sigmund's daughter look right there. <laughs> what do you that's, call it, Luke? Yeah, the the fero it's ferocious. It's ferocity. <laughs> yeah, you 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 see uh, something, an animal in the distance that needs to be uh, brought back to the cave and eaten. Exactly. Um, do you, um, but don't you have to, so when you think you retire, that's giving up? No, 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 no. I wouldn't okay. say that's giving up, but I would say that if I would just compete now and not aim for the games, I would say that would be a little bit of giving up. <clears throat> like my goal has been since I tore my ACL of making it back, back to the games. And I feel that I cannot, like give up on that until I have actually made it. And yeah, like that's, that's been my main goal, but I feel like the games are hit. The atmosphere is changing a little bit around the games. I feel, especially this year. And it's going to be interesting to see a little bit how it goes. And Dave Castro is back in business. So I'm excited to see what, what he's going to bring. And, and yeah, it's just going to be, it's going to be interesting, but of course, I'm not going to give up on trying to make it to the games to answer oh, your question. What, what do you mean by different atmosphere? I don't know. It's just uh, like like these rules that they're setting out now a month before the competition. It's just like it's like you're throwing off the athletes for no reason. Why don't you just change the standard next year? Like if you're going to. If you're going like, to change anything, why a month before the cross of games? Like, what do you mean? Like the gloves and the belts and the. Yeah. It's just like trying to test the athlete or throwing them off because of equipment that doesn't make any sense. It's like, I just feel like we're already stressed enough and we've already sacrificed enough. Why are you adding to the plate of something that doesn't make any sense? Like, how are you going to judge this? That's what I think. What do you mean? The gloves and the belts and yeah. anything I else? In the belt. I, like the grips is what I mean. It's like, how are you going to judge that when somebody – shows you that it's shorter here but then they just move their wristbands up and they start the competition it's like judge gonna no rep somebody that has longer grips than their finger and what are you gonna do mid floor when yeah. that happens like you say like it either needs to be that you can't wear grips or or they need to make the standard that clear that nobody gets away with with something do you watch dave's week in review no do you think you will yeah. start watching it? Do you even know about it? No, I didn't know about it. Yeah, he has the he has a YouTube channel. What? And he and for the last three years or t for I don't know, yeah, for a long time he's he's been doing just this weekly thing. Yeah. And it's called the Dave Castro Weekly Review. Oh. Huh. Yeah. I haven't seen that, but I'll definitely watch that. And look, look what happened. Uh, when he became put in charge of the game, look what happened to his view count. Wow. From 2,000 to 20,000. Yeah. That's insane. You would be crazy not – you have to watch those. Yeah. First, they're good. I, I think they're very endearing, and they're yeah. good. 
But I think also as a games athlete, you'll appreciate them. They're short too. And you can yeah. watch them at one and a quarter time. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. it'll be Dave interesting now. Channel. Say it again. Dave, Dave beat me by starting a YouTube channel. You still don't have a YouTube channel? No, but it's work in progress. Okay. What are you going to do on there? Oh, like all the great things. Unicycle. Hey, um, do you, do you, do you, um, uh, do you do any programming? Uh, I do, but not like, um, public programming. Like it's mostly just if my friends need it or something like that. Do you my enjoy dad. it? Oh, I love it. It's just very time consuming. Like I'm, I'm such a perfectionist. So if I'm giving out a program, it has to be a proper individualized program. So I just haven't given myself time to to do that. I, that's something that I might have in mind after my career also. Agaratast. Agaratas. Yes. Sara Sigmund's daughter. Reta Redast. Daratast. Daratast. It all work itself out. It's just an Icelandic saying here that we uh, that we love. Uh, what if CrossFit just prohibited all equipment? Sure, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, but then it's equal for everybody. <clears throat> how many coaches have you had? There, you, have you? Do you know? Could um? Do you know how many coaches you have? You think? No, do you I, remember them all? Yeah, yeah, I remember them all. Um, you do really, honestly. You don't just have to say that. I can't remember every girlfriend I've had. No, I can remember all my boyfriends and also. Uh, all you my cannot boyfriends. remember all your boyfriends. Yes, I can. How old are you? What do you think? Uh, 27. Oh, great, great answer. No, I'm 30. Okay. Uh, I was, that goes away in the next seven years. You better write those down. I'm telling you, by the time you're 37, they'll be like. Then I won't remember anything. Yeah, you'll be like, what was that guy? What was that guy's name? <laughs> okay, uh, how many coaches have you had? You've had a lot of coaches. More coaches. Yeah. You have, okay, are we going to do this? Oh, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay, so first coach was Eric and John. So okay. they were like a combination into okay. um, Eric and John. And then uh, I wouldn't uh -oh. say, that, no, I wouldn't say that Froning was my coach, but Froning assisted me with programming 2017. Let's say, let's just put his name down there because it's fun. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, he deserves credit. So yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then from that, uh, I went to Red Pill. Oh, what? what who, who's Red Pill? Red Pill is uh, James, Jousey, and Phil. I don't know them. Are they still around? Uh, Jousey is. Jousey okay. is uh, Emma McQuaid's coach and Briggsy's coach. Oh. Yeah. He, who's who's he, Briggsy? Uh, Sam Briggsy? Yeah, yeah. You call Sam Briggsy? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Briggsy, yeah. I like both of them. Uh, what do you say? I like both of them. Yeah, they are amazing. Yeah. Really amazing. Uh, then from them, I went to Max. And then now I'm working with Justin. Oh, that's not very many. Well, Max into parents, so training think tank. Yeah. Um, uh, that's, not, that's not very many. It is a lot, though. Like, I mean, BK has had Yami for 10 years, so he has had one coach while I'm – I switch a bit. That's only – that's five. Yeah. Oh, and, and, why, and why are you switching? Is it different every time or is it the same reason every time? I would say it's different every time. Just sometimes you and the coach just don't work that well together, so you need to switch it up. Or the coach has brought everything to the table that – he has like it's just it's very different um, the vibe you... go ahead no i just said it's the vibe you know oh what do you look for in a coach um i think it's what i need now is somebody that believes in what i can do and what i'm capable of that helps me believe it also um yeah, that has a very positive energy. It's it's pretty laid back also. And I'm just describing Justin Cutler here because <laughs> he's the perfect, perfect guy in that area. 
he believes in you? Yes, he actually does. And, and um, and where did you meet him? I actually, me and Carrie Pierce, we were we we're good friends, and I remember I met him at Waterpalooza twenty eighteen. He was standing there with a cowboy hat and just a legend from day one, and he just brings this energy in the area of just everybody is is friends and loving, and it was just. He brought this different aura to to Miami 2018, and and yeah, that's just how I met him. And then I met him again, uh, like throughout the years competing. But I met him uh, 21 in Dubai, and uh, and he was so nice because you know you like I had talked to him a little bit, but he said one thing to me. He said the light of CrossFit uh, is missing. So he was just referring to that the, the competition of CrossFit misses me. And I was like, I, you have no idea how much I miss <laughs> being on that floor. So it was it was so nice to to actually hear his opinion about it. And uh, oh there he is. <laughs> and um and yeah, and and then we just we stayed in touch and I met him again at Waterpalooza and and Caitlin, one of my best friends, is uh is coached by him. So we spent some time there and Caitlin Van Ziel? Yeah. I need to have her on the show too. She didn't yes. make it, right? She didn't she, make it. No, she was so close to making it. But yeah, we we're, we're gonna train together now this off season, so we'll push each other. What about proximity? Uh, Cotler's out in the middle of nowhere, like in UFO land. <laughs> well, I'll see it soon. I'm going there after a week, so. Oh, you are. Yes. Now, and will you reside there a bit? I think I'm just gonna stay there for a bit. Try to push Alex. A little bit before the games and oh uh, that's cool yeah so uh and just see the environment and see all of them and and yeah just just checking it out and then take it from there like i have some i have a pilot exams in august so i need to leave the states before that um and, t tell me about pushing alex you'll go out there and just put the love on her too just yeah of course you only push her because you wanna you want her to do well and it's it's very hard. Like I know that she trains a bit by herself, and it can be so hard when it when it's getting close to the competition. The nerves are kicking in, and you almost like I wouldn't say you lose your motivation, but it it gets hard to motivate yourself because you start thinking about a result that you want to get, and maybe some days you don't get it. So it's very mentally tough, and just having a person there that can make or make you accountable of showing up and putting in the work. And enjoy it at the same time, of course. So I think that's hopefully I can push her, but I'm not sure that I can push her in a lot of things now. She's she's so good. She's a specimen, huh? Yes, and she's insanely strong. She's like her bench is like <laughs> it's more than Snorri's bench, and that says a lot. You know? <laughs> You've been waiting to say that the whole show, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, yeah, what, that, that's really cool. I like the thought of you guys training together. I like the thought of you going out there. Does, does any part of her, when you see her journey, remind you of yourself? Uh, I think that she's just an underdog. <laughs> and yeah. that's where I can relate to her. Like, like you saw her last year and you saw the potential in her and then you see her this year and how much she's improved. And it's just like, she's the definition of, of an underdog. And she's oh, so wow. young still. Yeah, she's so young and she's so talented. And there's just, there's a lot of there that's, uh, and she's going to shine now at the game. So it, it's going to be so much fun watching her. And she's, she's just a nice person and a human at the same time while being so talented. What about Kotler? Um, uh, how um, emotional he is as a coach. That's um, why we connect. We're the same in that area. We're both like, we're you both love very, that energy point off of them. Yeah. We, like, I've always competed through my heart. Like, that's where I get my energy. I see the crowd and I'm like, it's just some people don't get that energy, but I've always competed with my heart and with emotions and everything like that. And, and then Justin is exactly the same way. In the training think tank crew, uh, Max El Haj, I don't know, remember your coach's name, but I, it was the Asian girl, Harry. right? Yeah, yeah I really like listening to her talk. She's um, amazing. She is. She is so, amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. 
Yeah, she comes off like she knows her shit and she's committed. Yeah, she definitely does. And she's sending now a team and she's working with Bethany. Oh, uh, Shadburn. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but their energy seems very, uh, like, I don't know what the word is, equanimous. Like there's an equanimity to it. There's a, 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 a steadiness to it. But you, whereas Kotler is like, like he, he, he could explode. Yeah, I mean, we're both... I mean, we have a little bit controlled, but we also like this is the reason. Not why that he I, does explode, but but he but he flirts with it. He's like a space shuttle, like on the on the on the um, launch pad, and like you see smoke yeah. and flames coming out of it. You're like, this fucker is gonna blow. Yeah, but it actually when he is like that, he sends the energy to you. Like you yeah. see how much he cares, and you see how much he wants you to succeed, and that's what gives you so much energy because. You don't want to let him down like you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He believes he, in you or else. Yeah. He, yeah he's making exactly. himself vulnerable. Yeah. He's making himself vulnerable and, and you don't want to let him down because he puts so much love and effort in it. That's parent. Yeah. Oh, hi, parent. Bye, parent. Hi, parent. <laughs> That's just there's Carla. There he is. Sarah, I get this. Um, um, perspective from you that uh, you want to like everyone, love everyone, and be good to all of humanity. True. And there's a piece of that inside of me. Like I used to, I used to have this thought that if someone ever robbed my house, I would just jump out the window and go to the bar and have a drink and just let them take what they want. What do I care? <laughs> I'm not like fuck it. <laughs> Well, I'm not completely there. I feel that the people that deserve the love and everything, that they are giving it back also. They're good humans. But then you have some humans that are very selfish and self-centered that don't respect others and look at themselves in a, it, as the only thing that matters in the world and everything should be around them. So mm. the people that are like sacrificing a lot like like the judges and semifinals they're sacrificing their time they're they're volunteers they're spending three days of long days setting everything up and everything like you have to bring and give them energy and they give it back to you also okay okay that's how i look at it is you should show everybody love and energy and some people just don't take it or don't want to give it back. And then you just ignore them and you still keep giving energy. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> you don't agree there. No, I do. I, I had mischaracterized you. I thought that there was sort of a, I had mischaracterized you I, where I was, where I was going to go that like, for me, I was, um, um, everything is God's creature. The yep. worst and the best, they're all walking around as, as, as beams of light manifesting yep. in different forms, the darkest things and the, and, the, and the lightest things. But at some point, they're all still light. Yeah. And then I had kids. And then it became, well, if you come in my house in the middle of the night, I'm going to put a hole in you. Yeah, because you're protective. And I didn't even see it happen. And yeah. I'm just wondering if that um, – I just want to see. I, I'm just curious if if what if that uh, what that change in you would be like because there's a part of you that is uh, reminds me so much of myself in the, as, as over the years as I've studied you that's like okay I you're an you're an alchemist you bring it you could bring in darkness and turn it into light you you like like Kotler said like there is a um, but I but I wonder if at some point something um, do you think you're gonna have kids? Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm gonna have a big family. All right, <laughs> boy, it's gonna be fun. Um, it's gonna, you, you, it's gonna, this is gonna be fun knowing knowing you. Are are you not doing a lot of podcasts? I, it's very difficult to find interviews with you. Uh, no, I'm actually I don't do them a lot to be honest. Uh, just with you, Simon. Well, there's that's oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'll take that. Why is that? It's just time, like. I, I prioritize the things that matter more. And, and if I have a time slot that I can fit some podcasts in, it's like 
it's no problem at all. But like I have time, I have a little bit more time now because it's off season. So, but I'm just, I'm a legend in finding things to do and always be busy. So for Sonora, it maybe lines up a few things and then I, I have different plans and then we have to reschedule and. Oh yeah. You have to get a haircut. <laughs> yeah. But to be fair in that, like that shouldn't have taken that long. It was all planned beforehand. It but was I'm your. Thankful, I'm very thankful you forgave me. But I was just getting a haircut before the podcast, so I would look good for you. You know. I. But, uh, <laughs> I. Uh, you always look good, no matter what. <laughs> uh, and I'm a CrossFitter. I like a sweaty, yeah, ponytailed true. mess. Um. Uh, but um. Uh. I didn't forgive you because I I was never held it against you. The, I mean, it's so it's uh you. You sent me a picture of you sitting in your. Um, yeah, like you don't owe me shit, and you did that, and I melted like uh, like an ice cube. Yeah, like, oh, I mean, she's busy. She sent me a picture of you in the barber's chair, barber, whatever. Yeah, it was uh, it was my sympathy of I'm trying my best to not be late, but I have no control of these circumstances. Picture. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. Yeah, good. <laughs> my wife had a haircut that lasts six hours one yeah, time. I definitely relate to that. Absolutely insane. Um, with absolutely no stress, I don't want to put any any stress on you. Zero, like no, like don't like I don't I. Um, since you are in the area, if you're nearby, and you wanted to hang out or say hi or go out to dinner or you, need, if there's anything I could do for you, reach out. If not, there's no. Um, you're my friend. I never want anyone to feel there's no obligation. Thank you so much. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. And 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 the secret that you're keeping from all of us right now that you can't keep from me, um, you that's more than that welcome to. Sure. That's more <laughs> not the unique one. There's another one. You know, another Taylor, one. Yeah. Can you see the pri private chat? Can you see the private chat? Wait, I'm checking this now. In the in the computer, can you see private chat? No. Oh. Well, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here. Oh gosh, no! I knew I had to prepare myself for something here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're you're welcome at any time to uh to to to, to chill. You want to get a sandwich or something, or see what it's like to have three kids. Yeah, I, I have to prepare myself for that because I'm gonna have four. There you go. Yeah. Uh you're always welcome on the show. You seem like you're in a great headspace. I wasn't sure what to uh expect uh coming off of semifinals. Um and, and, and you were very vulnerable on your Instagram. Oh, yeah, let me finish with that. Is it is it hard being vulnerable on your Instagram? It is. You wanna show all the good things, you don't want to show the bad things, and you don't wanna you, like this is hard for the ego of just actually showing uh, that you failed. Like it's very hard, but it's part of it. Like I look at it in that way of somebody that might experience something similar to me can look at that and then they see me hopefully succeeding again and then they see the possibility of it happen. And like that's why like, you do that. Like there, I was surprised to see you on the floor crying with your ponytail. Like yeah. showing emotion of disappointment. Well, before you posted that, were you like, oh, I don't, oh. Did yeah, you, did I did definitely not want to see that even. I was still so angry. Like looking at it now, even I get just like this feeling inside my heart of just, it's a, it's a heartbreak. <laughs> hmm. Well, there's no sign of it on your face now. No, no, no. We, we, um, we learn. Hmm. Everything happens for a reason. We have to we have to have faith in that, and I also have faith in everything is going to be provided at the right time. Awesome! Uh, I can't wait for uh, till the next time we talk. You are an amazing human being. Dinner time. Dinner time. Person talk. Yes. All right, my dear. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me, Simon. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> God, she's great. Fuck. She's amazing. 
Uh, Rambler, Sarah, I love you. I saw you multiple times. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, geez, Louise. Uh, Jeremy, thank you for trying to help a brother out. Yeah, sure, brother. I think that you spelled that wrong. It's brother, B-R-O-T-H-A, brother. I need a cigarette. We, who is that with Jessica? The other one, Ty Emery. Probably. Uh, Sean Sullivan. Uh, my daughters love her. Hey, dude. Oh, um, who who is saying? Who is the guest we had on that Caleb that people were saying was a vibe? Oh God. Was it Ty Emery? I think it was. That sounds familiar. Yeah. She was a vibe. Oh, shit. That's right. From one brother to another. Thank you. Uh, Rosie Photography. She's so beautiful. Dude, you're going to get to take... Oh, I forgot to ask her if she's going to the games. Well, shit. Well, maybe you can ask her that later. Yeah, that actually wasn't Sarah Sigmund's daughter. That was Michelle Bazinet. Uh, Zachary Kadatz. The Daily CrossFit tip. Uh, the only time my wife watches the show is when Sarah or Danielle Brandon Energy are on. It's a shame. Sounds like my wife, too. Oh, it's a shame, too. Uh, one of the most passionate moments I saw from an agent was after Sarah's injury at Wadapalooza, and I saw Snorri in, in at, in it, in at, in at, in it, in, in at, in it, Snorri in it. Okay, fine. Oh, in the, there it is. The rest of it. Uh, lob, oh, comfort, trying to comfort her. Mike Flair, private chat reveals what he was trying to half on Sevon's daughter. Oh, I don't know what that is, but I like it. Sevon's daughter. Oh, she loved the show. Great. The Unknown. Uh, nice job, Sevon. Thank you. I apologize for uh, snapping at you earlier. I, I, I really do. For snapped on The Unknown earlier. Thank you. Sevon, I'm, Sevy, I'm still waiting for CrossFit to send me the email that I'm for sure going to the games. I will tell uh, – she's a real one. Great show, Sevon. Thanks, brother. Hey, uh, Mr. Cotler, Justin Cotler, coach of uh, Jerry Garcia. No, not Jerry Garcia. Ricky Garrard. <laughs> and Sarah. <laughs> Got my wires crossed. Uh, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, Ricky Garrard. Ellie Turner. No, not Ellie Turner. Who else? Oh, Alex, uh, Alex Gazan. Jeez Louise, fucking scramble. I just see it when I just so you guys know, you want to know what it's like in my head when I close my eyes and I think of names. I just see thousands of people jumping around on a trampoline. Like, just imagine, like, you know what I mean? Like, great, like the Wii lobby. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? They just have a bunch of characters just literally doing that, jumping around. Even, even like my own wife. Like, I, I'm like, What's her name? Oh, yeah, yeah, there she is, jumping over there. What's she doing with Waldo? Alex Gazan. <laughs> I got a chance to speak with uh, Jake Gazan, which is pretty cool today. Hiller and I did, had a three-way with him. Ooh. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Does that play? No. Oh. A yeah, imagine a trampoline with like 3,000 people on it. When I close my eyes, that's what I see, and they're just all jumping around. And I'm like, oh, fuck, what's that dude's name? <laughs> <laughs> you people have to that need to emotion. People that shouldn't even be on a trampoline. Um, I, 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 I'm uh, Constance Fitness. Jeez, what a pose! Holy camoly, Jack. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, am I, am I, uh, am late, but what do you think of the cuts of the games? Um, I, I don't know. I need, I probably need someone to tell me what to think on that. I think that's a I, Friday show. What? That's a Friday show thing. Okay, yeah. Uh, tomorrow night, Constance. Um, Constance, I think I think they don't get cut until after Saturday. six six events or something like that. I don't know. I probably don't. I probably don't care. Although, what is interesting, Constance? Yeah, it is. A, it is a tomorrow show, but it could be weird. We have to see the programming to know to judge the cuts. I think because if it's like last year, right? The, the, didn't Laura go from like seventy fifth place to? for second place like in the last day yeah i think mm -hmm. i can play a big factor in it um 
Uh, pool boy, Sevon, you're not alone. My brain does the same thing, except people on the trampoline are dicks. Oh, like assholes? What? Yeah. Oh, just everyone looks like a dick? It's like just balls and dicks jumping around. Everyone's like a... Just oh, my goodness, thing. Dale. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Damn. I don't even want to read it because I'm afraid I might answer. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, Lewis Brackpool. Sweet. I got something. I got something really interesting. I want to show him. Look at this. This morning show with Greg Glassman has been passed by the show with Taylor and Jr. and Brian this afternoon. Unfucking believable, kicking those guys off. That was a good show with Greg. With Greg. Oh, you did like it? Yeah. It was very mellow, right? Yeah, it was so chill. Uh, someone in the comments wrote, uh, "Amazing stuff. Thank you for your time, Greg. Thank you for your hard work. Keep it up." How come it says there's four comments and then I go to it and I only see one? I don't know. What do you think about the fact Sarah's still going for it? I think she ex articulated it well, where she says she's still trying to do it, like she's enjoying herself and that she doesn't, like she still wants to go for it, but she's appreciating what she's doing in the meantime, like how she's going to try to get there, basically. But I'm not 100% sure that will get her to the games. She took this crazy deep breath and her shoulders came up when she said, since my ACL tear, it's been my goal to get to the games. And I was like, ooh, if I was like, if I had paid attention in psychology 101, I would have known what that is. I imagine it's probably a little bit of a sore spot because she hasn't been back since, what, 18? 1854? Yeah. Um, you know what is going to happen? This is uh, um, Sarah and Greg uh, uh, on it. Sarah and Greg on at the same time. That would be a great chat. You know what's interesting is what's going to happen is all both of those shows are going to be brought to their knees because the Sarah, Sarah show is going to explode. That's what happens. We did three shows in one day. People don't have time for this nonsense. And um, and um, so they're. They're just going to pick the Sarah show. Easy, Sevy. What? What did I say? Dude, Bruce Wayne's... Bruce, Bruce, your uh, thumbnails are getting so good. Yeah, they are. They're dope. That one where you made me into George Washington was crazy. <laughs> That was awesome. Oh, I think she uh, Sarah sent me a a WhatsApp. Ah, ah. You gotta take her out to dinner now. Yeah, she wants to. I gotta go. She wants to go to dinner. Sweet. Okay. Uh. To, so tomorrow's Lewis Brackpool. It's gonna be a fun show. And then cross the game show tomorrow night. Yeah, that that one's gonna be awesome. Those are always good shows. Those are fun. Uh, tomorrow's is gonna be a shitload of CrossFit talk. Uh, Sevon, tuck your phone under your pillow and listen to all three shows while you sleep, people. Oh, everyone. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a great point. Yeah, Brucey's killing it, Brucey. It would be awesome if Sarah was on the demo team. Wow. I think she's too big time for that. She can be on the demo team. Lewis Brackpool is on tomorrow. English guy. Right up my alley. Oh, thank you. Oh. Aren't these cool? Yeah, they are cool. I want one. Me too. When you, uh, we didn't get the QR code so people can just point their... Um, no, not yet. I was trying to figure out how to upload that. I think Sousa has a system for it or something. 
I can put the link in the chat, though. Oh, you're a good dude. Thank you. Oh, there's something I want to show you guys. I just think it's, I should wait till tomorrow morning. Okay. Oh, when are you going to have Calvin Robinson on? Uh, we had him scheduled. That's funny you asked that. Roxanne is wonderful. That's crazy. What are you, in Europe? He's the, he's the, um, he's the pastor, right? The black guy with the fro is the pastor? We, yeah. had him, we had him lined up, and uh, he, he no-showed. I, I, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, I, I am several hundred percent closer of going to the games now than I was this morning. So if I was 1% this morning, I'm, I'm like 5%. That, that's a 500% increase or 400, 500. Huge chance. Yeah, that's huge. I think that's huge. Oh, Tim Brown, thank you. Uh, you were a wide receiver for the uh, Oakland Raiders. I think maybe you even you, you were, I think you were the fastest man in the NFL for a while. There was a there was a comment here I need to pull up. What's the name? Oh, what's the name? Uh, Sema. What's the name of the movie? Uh, uh, I don't think we got that guy rescheduled yet, but ch look up. Sh can you look up Sean H Hibbler? 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 Oh. I think it's called Level With Me. I'm in the UK. It was scheduling issues with Calvin. Time difference. Okay, I'll, I'll bug him again. That, that You're right. I dropped the ball on that. I, he's, he, he's interesting. Rambler, Sevon's NFL knowledge. Yeah, I know a little bit of everything. That's <laughs> not true, by the way. I don't know a little bit of everything. Um, level with me, level, uh, the next level, Fluvid 19. Those are four different movies. I can't remember which one I watched. I really liked it. Like, it's not, it's, um, let me see. Uh, I didn't see the one that had Bryce. I don't think Bryce Mitchell, Mitchell was in the one I saw, but I, but I, but I really liked it. And it basically starts off with like, yeah, you talk, oh my God, it had two stars. Let me see that. It had two stars. 3.2. It looks like it's 1.5 on there. It's not like that at all. It's so easy to watch. It's so good. It just moves through stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I saw that one or the one. Let me see. Keep going. Oh. The next level. Anyway, I thought it was good. Four out of ten. Those are people just – I bet you – it was like today I looked at something. I can't remember what it was. It was a camera or something online at B&H. And there were like 21 stars, and they were all that the camera came broken. It's like that's not a one star, you fucking idiots. I bet you all the one stars are from people who just refuse to like – they didn't even watch it. They're like, hey, this is just flat. This is just nonsense. And it's not like that at all. It's not like – I watched it in a room with six people. No, no one – Everyone th went into it, you know, kind of like not as serious as I was going to take it. And everyone came out like, oh, fuck, I don't know if I should have seen that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's not. Um, I mean, they're going through stuff. They go anything that you would say. The first thing they, they explain is, is like, yeah, the reason why people laugh at us is they use a good. Well, I don't really want to get into it, but but it's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. I was I was a 49ers fan. I was a 49ers fan and a Raider fan. Uh, Joe Montana, Steve Young, Jim Plunkett. Oh, look at Chrissy <laughs> scouting out camera gear for Madison. Fuck, so many fucking Snoopy fucking investigators. Listen to what I say. That was like when. Bruce noticed that I ate last Sunday. He said I was having a hamburger. He goes, what about fasting? It's like, you son of a bitch. I did actually fast yesterday. In the middle of the week? Yeah, I had to because I was fucking off last Sunday. I went to a friend's uh, house and, dude, I 
I had two Coors Lights, the ones like in steel cans. I know it was fucking crazy. You're really off the walls now. It was nuts. I had two Coors Light and passed out by my friend's pool and then woke up and had two desserts. Dang. What kind of dessert? Was it like tiramisu? I don't even know what it was. One was or one was key lime pie and one was a banana something. Dude, key lime pie. So when I was deployed I didn't even like it, but it was good. When I was deployed, we used to like take trips downtown to Oman and drop patients off. And if we had to spend the night, we would stay at, at a Marriott. And it was like going from living in a tin can. I saw that Marriott. That was the world's nicest Marriott. It's beautiful. It is yeah. so nice. They have like a, there's like a steak uh, restaurant with like a cigar bar attached to it. They have like. Oh shit, Caleb yeah, froze. You froze. Oh, did I? Yeah. You froze at steak. Now you're back. Okay. So there's a steak, there's like a steak restaurant with a cigar bars and humidors and all this stuff. And uh, every time we would go, if it was like past dinner time, I would order just the biggest steak that they had. And then I would have key lime pie at the end. And that was like my treat. Did you bill that to the taxpayers or you had to pay for it? No, I paid for it myself. Oh, that sucks. But that was like my little treat every time we had to drive downtown for his patients. Why would you have that pie? That pie's not even that good. Uh, It was like really good for where I was. Okay. Like it, it was like everything outside of the food that they were providing to us was just better. So I just have like really fond memories of key lime pie now. <laughs> key lime pie is like there's there's desserts that 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 suck like um, um that I like like um black licorice. Okay. I can't stand black licorice, but I love it. Or yeah. or think or hot tamales. You know, I mean, I haven't yeah. had. I mean. I, I don't, but key, but but key lime pie or key lime, key lime. It's just, it's, it's just, it's, it's bad and it's bad. I mean, I still eat it, but <laughs> it's no black licorice. So, do you know what I mean by black licorice is shitty, but it's still good? Yeah, I I understand. I don't, I won't eat it very often. Like, I won't go out of my way to eat it. But if somebody like offers it to me, he'll like have a bite or something. Like it's weird. Yeah, it is weird. Like it almost like feels like it has some medicinal value. Yeah, almost like cough syrup. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, we'll see you tomorrow morning. 11 hours. Holy shit. 10 hours and 53 minutes. <clears throat> hmm. Can't. You don't. You can't possibly. Well, I mean, I mean, oh, sorry. Rosie said I was going to. I could borrow some of her lenses. And I was going to say, you can't possibly have any lenses I don't own. But, I, but that's just dickish. I, I think I'm going to change my answer to thank you. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> right? Yeah, that sounds way better. Okay. Uh, love you guys. Uh, Caleb and I will see you uh, very soon. Tomorrow night. I'll see you in the morning. Caleb will see you tomorrow night.